Hi, I'm Andrew Moy from TightLinesFlyFishing.com. Today we're going to be doing a March Brownie Merger. This is a favorite pattern of mine. It works really well. We're using a partridge clink hammer hook in a size 14. 14 is uh, generally very small for March Brown, but these hooks run very big. So it's actually equivalent more to an 8 or a 10. I'm using an ADOT uni thread. We're going to start the thread here in the middle of the hook, and we're going to work our way down. You can see I've got this hook angled down. That's because of the bend on it. It's much easier in the beginning here to have it angled down so I can work with more of a flat area here rather than with the area angled way down. So our first step, we're going to use a, a pheasant tail fiber for a tail. This fly is going to have three tails like a March Brown does. So we're going to take that about the length of the hook shank. We're going to lay that in. We're going to switch hands, get that locked in. Our next step, we're going to use hairline dubbing in pale yellow and March brown. We're going to mix these two. So I've got a little bit here pulled out. And I'm just going to basically shuffle them like this and just mix them. You can use a blender if you've got a blender to do this, a coffee grinder or something like that. And just going to shuffle that real quick and get that blended a little bit. I'm going to take a little bit of dubbing, very, very small amount of dubbing. Almost nothing. I'm going to make a little bit of dubbing on the thread there. I'm going to create a little ball of dubbing right here in the back of the fly. Bring my thread forward a little bit. The next step is to take two more pheasant tail fibers. Okay, we're going to line those up, make them the same length as the first one. So we're going to line them up with that first one, switch hands, lock that in. What I like to do is I take my middle finger, stick it between the two tails, hold it with my thumb and my ring finger on either side of the hook shank, and I just wrap up to that ball of dubbing. And that's going to split my two tails like that. So I can cut those or break those, and now I've got a nice split tail. <clears throat> my next step, I'm going to take some flat wax nylon in tobacco brown, that's my color. I'm going to take a strand of that, and I'm going to lay that in. This is going to become this is going to become my rib. So I'm going to bring that all the way back to the tail. Lay that away out of the lay that aside out of the way. I'm going to go back to my dubbing. And I'm going to dub my body forward. Now March Brown's a pretty thick bug, so you don't want to make it too thin, but at the same time you don't want to over bulk it. You don't want to make it a big clumpy mess. You want to you know, think about what you're doing here, make the, the body tapered real nice. You know, if you're unsure on how to do this and what a bug looks like, you know, collect them. You know, turn some rocks over and, uh, and, and get some naturals and see what they look like so you know what you're tying. So, as I tie here, I'm just going to taper the body again. Not too thin, not too thick. I'm going to actually turn this hook flat now because it started, I'm getting working my way forward on this hook and it's starting to flatten it out for me. Let's just work your way forward. We're going to come forward about halfway, a little bit more than halfway, not quite two thirds. Okay. Again, a little bit of dubbing at a time. A little bit of dubbing at a time. That's good, right there. We're a little bit more than halfway. I'm going to take my my thread that I tied in for my rib, and I'm going to rib this. I'm just twisting it as I wrap it, and I should get about five turns through the body. I'm evenly spacing this going forward. I'm palmering it through the body. Five, maybe six turns through the body. There's five. We're going to go six. My six turn. And we're going to tie that off. My next step is to tie in four white CDC feathers, and I'm just going to line the tips of these feathers up. I'm going to get them all lined up, okay, and we're going to gather these into like a clump, like that. And this is going to be about half the length of the hook shank, so I'm going to advance my thread to just behind the eye here. 
and I'm going to tie it in right there. And I've left a little bit of room up front here to tie off the fly and work work some thread underneath behind that in front of, excuse me, in front of that CDC. Wrap back over the stems a little bit and then trim that away. My next step is going to be to tie in a piece of turkey tail. Okay, I've taken that section out of here. I, uh, I shellac this with a little bit of flex cement to help, help it hold together. And I'm just going to cut that back a little bit and I'm going to tie this in right here. Right on top like that. I'm going to bring that all the way back to my body. And it's just like a wing case on a hair's ear nymph. Okay, and I'm, you can see I brought that wing case all the way back to the body like that. My next step is to tie in some hackle. And I'm going to choose a, a brown and a grizzly hackle. And I'm using, I'm using a whiting neck here. It's a brown and grizzly. And I'm taking one of each. And the size should be equivalent to like a size 12. Now this fly, like I said, is equivalent to like a size 8 or 10. But I don't want my hackle too big on this fly. It's not like a traditional fly where I want a big hackle standing up. So I've, I've stripped these, uh, these quills down a little bit. I've left about a quarter inch here to work with. And I'm going to tie these hackles in with the curved side facing down like this. So they're going to get tied in right here, like so. So they're getting tied in like that. And I'm just trimming those, those stems away. My next step is going to be to dub forward and create my thorax. My thorax should be a little bit thicker than the body. So I'm going to get some dubbing on there. A little bit, again, a little bit of dubbing at a time. Tighten it up real good in the beginning here like that. Slide that up. And then dub myself a thorax. And I can always, as I get this dubbing locked into the fly, I can twist it more to tighten it up. It's really a good trick for dubbing. As you get better at dubbing, it's a, it really helps you to learn to do that. You know, get that dubbing on there. If it's not perfectly tight, don't worry about it. Get it a little tight in the beginning. Again, as that gets locked on, if you need to, you can, you can tighten it up. So we're going to dub forward almost just up to that white. We don't want to put too much dubbing there. So I'm dubbing right up to that white, as you can see there. My next step is to tie in a partridge feather. Okay, we're, we're going to select a feather off a partridge neck here. We're going to take a feather from, from right at the back of the neck here. We're going we're gonna to strip this feather back like this. Strip this hackle back like this. And then pull this back here. So like that. And then trim that tip right out of the feather. And then this is going to get tied in right on top like this. I'm going to do a couple loose wraps. I can, you can see I've got the curved side of this feather facing the fly. It's facing down. So I'm going to lock that in like that. And then I'm going to take that wing case and I'm going to fold it right over like that. So it's tied in like that. Fold it over. Lock that in. Stand that up trim that okay and then trim away the stem of the CD of the um, partridge feather bring my, bring everything up now and bring some thread underneath you want to really wrap a little bit of thread underneath there to help stand things up get that hackle pulled out of the way and then you're gonna put a couple a few turns around the base of this CDC like this to really create a little base here for me to wrap that hackle on Okay, and then I'm going to, again, bring that thread back in front of everything, right behind the hook eye there. I'm going to stand this fly up just a little bit more. And I'm going to take a, a, 
a few turns of hackle here. Two to three turns, not a lot. You don't want to over hackle it. Okay, and each time I go around, I'm just holding that that CDC feather. One more turn, that's it. Done. I don't want to over hackle it. If anything, I might decide that's too much hackle and undo a wrap. I want it fairly sparse, but enough to, to really lock it off. So now what I can do is I can pull everything out of the way and just use my finger, hold it right there while I tie it off. And again, try not to make sure you don't crowd your eye. Pull all that up. Trim that. Trim any errant hairs out of there. And then tie it off. And that's the fly. Really a great pattern. I'm going to take this out of the vise and show you here what this looks like for the fish. And ideally what you want to do is position yourself above the trout that you see rising and uh, cast this, land the fly above the fish and just float it down to them. Ideally what that fish is seeing is that butt of that fly coming at them like that. And it really pulls the trigger. I mean those fish see that, looks like a nymph just hanging in the film trying to hatch. And uh, it's very effective. That white post is easy to see and uh, really a super pattern. Give it a try.